Go live, go live, go live. We're live? All right. <clears throat> morning thoughts, morning thoughts, morning thoughts. Shout out to the people going out to work this morning. Shout out to the people coming in from work this morning. Extra, special, big up. Shout out to the people who work multiple jobs. I have the utmost respect for you. Shout out to my entrepreneurs, my stay-at-home moms and pops, my retirees. Shout out to the drivers, the Uber driver, Lyft driver, truck driver, taxi driver, food delivery drivers, round town, long distance truck drivers. Shout out to every single clean-hearted, good-hearted person who wants good for others as much as you want good for yourself. Shout out to you. Thank you for being here this morning. And we are up and running with a lot to be thankful for, not true? We're on the other side of the grung. We're not under the grung. We're not in our coffin, in the grung. No, no, we never get cremated. There was no funeral arrangements being made. We were not laid up in anybody's hospital. We're good to go. I forgive thanks in them times. Yeah. Listen up. I was gone for the weekend um, from Friday. Just came back last night. And I had to do nine hours of driving, about eight, nine hours of driving Friday. And I had to do about eight, nine hours of driving last night to get home. So I know I get old because after eight, nine hours of driving now, my driving foot, you know, gas brakes, gas brakes, right foot, my ankle. Whole morning, I'm hopping on my ankle whole morning. And this is the second time that it has happened. So even while I was driving, I was telling my son, who was in the passenger front seat, that, hey, because of doing this for eight, nine hours straight with your ankle, you know, gas bricks, gas bricks, gas bricks. My ankle's starting to hurt. Well, my ankle is hurting this morning, but I saw it go. So now I have my elbow where I hurt. I'm going to lick up my elbow upon the door the other day. You know when you hit your funny bone? That was not funny at all. I hit the serious bone. I couldn't even laugh. I couldn't laugh until my son started. <laughs> my son said, you hit the serious bone, Dad. That wasn't the funny bone. And I started laughing. So I guess, I don't know, but here we are, right? A lot to give thanks, thanks for elbow hurting, knee hurting, back don't feel too right, just falling apart. <laughs> oh, it's up. And I'm turning into my grandfather because I have a big cup of coffee in front of me this morning. I put on my glasses. I put on my glasses because the lights are too bright. You know, when you go out to the club and you come home late and then you wake up and you have a banging headache, one of them something that from on the club days. And then turn the light on. It's like, oh, damn, the lights are too bright. That's how I feel this morning. So on the beer with me. We got a couple of things to talk about this morning. That's like a flight from England to Jamaica. Nicole Coleman says, yes, friend. Long drive. Long drive. I'm tired, but I'm here. I'm here. I couldn't let this morning pass, though, because we got a lot to catch up on. And there's a lot that's been going on. Mm. Let me sip my bitter coffee. I like my coffee black, no sugar, no cream. That's how I do. You know. Uh, age catching up. Welcome to the club, raw Ted. Karen notice. Hi. At least somebody is there to welcome me. You have to... <laughs> I plan on laughing my way all through this thing. All through this. You know? Ain't we all starting to get old? Boy, that's life here. So I'm going to big up some people first and then we get into the topic. We have some very interesting and some one and two serious topic this morning but some very interesting topic so let's start with prelice one two three the first one in the building this morning bm is here as well denzel gale is here and audrey wright in roxy 20 roxy 21 big up yourself i haven't seen you in a while thank you for being here with us angel of mine thank you for being here king biggs big up yourself wayne nathan is in the building this morning rosalind smichael is here home tips is here. Stacey Ann Williams is in the building this morning. Soldier 819. Kai Tai Jai Empress is here this morning. Senior Sexy is here. Main One is here. Lady J is in the building this morning. Marcia Walters is here this morning. Lester Stevens Dea. De Buffalo Soderes is here this morning. Glad to see you here. Haven't seen you in a while either. Maxine Goodas Gold is in the building this morning. Richard Shiva is here. Darlie Walter Riley is here. Little Red Gucci, too. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you. Devin Gale is in the building this morning. Says, good morning, SoFlo family and friends. Big up. Julie Tapper is in the building this morning. Jane Ander is here this morning. Rosemary King says, grand rising, SoFlo, and everyone. Bless up. 
Juno Bryan's in the building. Seymour's in the building this morning. Lulu Ridges, Angel of Mind, Dorothy T, Vicky Victory is here this morning. Karen Notice says, good morning, SoFlo and family. And everyone tuning in, up, up, up. Blessings to all. Sharon Spence is in the building this morning. Up, up, SoFlo and family. It's a new day and new week for sure. And we are here and we are giving thanks. Debbie Jervis is in the building this morning. Morning, family. Your button down, your, bu your hatches in anticipation of Ian. No, sir. Not yet. If So there's a hurricane um, that was said to be coming this way, right? And so he's ask, um, Debbie is asking if my button down my hatches. So in Florida here, you know, you go outside and put up your storm shutters over the windows and things like that. I haven't done that yet. Uh, I don't think it's coming, though. Or if it, listen, it, in Florida, we it, it takes a lot for people to actually do all that, really. It, it's got to be blowing some stuff down already in the lower parts of Florida heading our way before we run out and do all that. People will just chill and just, yeah, it, it's all right. It'll pass. It'll pass. So we don't really run from hurricane like that. We've been through many. <laughs> We've seen a lot, you know. Purple Royal, big up yourself. We're not easily scared. We live right by the water, upon the beach, man. You know, so you got to be prepared for it. Purple Royal, big up yourself. Sharon Ingram's in the building. Brick House, thank you for being here. Richie Shiva, Lester Stevens, Nicole Coleman says, that's like a flight from England to Jamaica. My eight to nine hours of driving last night. Julie Tapper, big up yourself. Sean Cassell's in the building. Thank you for being here. Mervyn Point, Jamaica Curds in the building this morning. Misa is here. Jane Anders says, best way to drink coffee, a little splash of cinnamon, coconut oil, or sea moss. Sea moss in your coffee? No, sir. I'm not, not going to do that one day, but thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm going to stick to like how my grandfather used to put a whole heap of sugar in my coffee, though. And then we used to fight over his coffee cup. So he would drink his coffee, one big red mug, which he still has. The big red mug. And he would finish his coffee down to like almost finish and choose one of us each day who gets the bottom of the coffee cup. So we used to fight over it. Am I day today, Simone? No, are you are day today. I know you're day today. Am I day today? Grandpa say you're not getting none. And we used to fight like, like we're like a picnic now. We used to fight for the bottom dregs out of the man coffee cup because he would put the sugar in, but he wouldn't mix the sugar around. He'll just drop sugar in him coffee and drink him coffee. And then give the last bit of the cup. We used to boil milk because we had our own cows. So grandpa used to go milk the cow them and carry up milk and come boil it. And you know when you boil milk and then you let the milk set, there's a cream that forms on the top of the milk. And we used to scrape off the cream there. Our cream used to come off thick in them and cheesy. And you just sprinkle a little cane sugar upon it, brown sugar upon it. We never used to use white sugar either. I went to come off and start use white sugar and I don't use it anymore. You know, but um, them kind of something, they're good memories, good memories. We used to fight over that too. Who is going to get the cream off of the milk this morning? Big, big fight I go on. Them kind of something there. Big up to the people that I grew up with. My piss bed cousin them. <laughs> My piss bed cousin them, a, a real piss bed cousin in a car. Well, I was sleeping in one bed. Boys turn your head down that way. Girls turn your heads up this way. And somebody pissed the bed and we don't know as who because... My grandmother did cover the mattress with uh, like a, 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 a chapel in kind of something. Uh, so <laughs> when you piss on that, it does roll. It don't soak through to the mattress because, you know, I mess up the good, good mattress. So it just rolls. So everybody get wet. And then we wake up looking at each other. Are you pissed in bed? No, no, me. Are you pissed? The grandma got beat. Grandma beat the whole away. Because the whole away pissed the bed this morning. Everybody wet. Nobody don't know who pissed the bed. Joys of growing up. Mm. The way how I grew up. Anyhow, <laughs> to be the best days. Karen Notice says that those used to be the best days. I love the homemade coffee. I'm still addicted. And I remember those days freshly. The cow's milk. Yes, man. Straight from the cow. I knew where my milk was coming from. I knew where my chicken was coming from. Grandpa said, oh, no one. Some chicken soup for dinner today. I said, yes, Grandpa. I'm going to kill a chicken. That's so how we know where chicken come from. Yeah, when we had eat pork, we had cut, we had um holy pop pig. See, so sometimes we have a 30, 40 something pig. I mean, I grew up on a farm farm. 
And them days that my grandfather farmed big. See? So we are we are eat beef, we had cow. Cow get killed. We knew where our food came from. Nowadays you never know where the food come from. You stop by McDonald's and you get a burger and you bite it and you're like, is this really beef though? Kind of tastes like beef. It tastes like anyhow. Let's not go there. Here's what we're talking about this morning. All right. A popular vlogger out of Jamaica. Boy, I'm mean, telling you, you know, um, our people, we're different, man. And it's not in a good way sometimes, you know. We are the best of the best when we're good. And when we're bad, it's just really, really bad. And I say that all the time. Uh, Lee Gates TV. I don't know if y'all know him. Uh, I'm just discovering him. I tell people to reach out to me and I'll work with them. And try to work with them and we can get something going, like some collaborations and stuff. A lot of people, well, they don't reach out. So I just assume, you know what I mean? And I reach out to people and they don't reply. So I assume, like, maybe some of the topics I cover, some people... Because some people say me risky, you know. Some people say I'm controversial. Some people say I'm risky. Some people don't want to be associated closely with me, even though them big me up behind the scenes. But on front page, them now come big me up. It's like, you know when people, yeah man, big up yourself so flow. And then on the front page, they're probably telling other people like, yo, I'm going to deal with that you, you know, or whatever. So that, those are the vibes that I get from a lot of people in the, not just vlogging, but entertainment industry and all these other things. I mean, I know it's probably because when I first came out, I said, don't do nothing wrong me, call me tell. I probably not. I probably that in my early days I said don't do nothing wrong me because me will tell me not have no secret and I don't keep no secret for nobody and nobody don't have no secret for me. Me not live no gunman life. Me not live no strange life behind the scenes that anybody is gonna. Ooh, oh my God, that's so I can't believe it. No, nope, what you see is what you get. So if you're not one of them, what you see is what you get. Person that nobody invite me nowhere because if me see stuff where me not supposed to see. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. <laughs> so I guess they're like, yeah, deal with the one there with that long stick. Keep him way over there. So I'm cool on everything, you know, but you hear what I'm saying? Take sleep, mark that. All right, sir. Whatever the case is, they don't mess with me. It's all good. I got love for everybody. And I'm doing quite well by myself. Yeah. God ordained it that way. So I'm walking in, I'm walking in that. Anyhow, Lee Gates TV, a Jamaican vlogger. See where something going. Is a brother. I actually went to go check his channel out. Somebody linked me. I said, Oh, Flo, you know, see your fellow Claridonian, them kill him, them slap him where. Mm. Just to give myself a little credit before we go into that, and you can go do your research, I was the first to put TV at the end of my stuff because I, I saw this as a TV, my TV. This is my TV station. So you're tuning to SoFlo TV. See? And then after that, um others even on stage with mr winford williams didn't have tv let me put tv first by my thing and then all these tvs came after but anyhow we're not there for the um self-praise this morning lee gates somebody said yo uh a fellow claridonian vlogger who's pretty well known got killed and i was like i don't know any Vlogger from Clarendon. So them send me the story. One was in the Gleaner, one was in the Star. We're going to go through it. I went in and looked at his channel. He got killed about five hours after he covered a story. A double murder story in a neighboring community. Hmm. And in his video, he was saying, Yeah, boy, I have to be careful out there. Look, we are no police. And, you know, them... Even doing them story here, you know, people will bad mind you and kill you. Bad mind you as in, but I guess he was trying to say stuff like, because he he went into his history of um start out as cooking and then him become head chef in the kitchen, then him buy a one taxi and then him buy a minivan and then him do this. He's hustling his way up, you know, and he's like, me now beg nobody nothing. We're not out here beg people stuff, you know, we are do it, we are get it. And we're going to switch the platform from Facebook to YouTube, people, because Facebook is not paying us at all. We don't make no money over there. And YouTube, now we discovered that we could get paid. So hopefully, if we can get a little 20 cent, 30 cent um, of each viewer, and that means that we are going to have, have to have a lot of views in order to get any kind of money. Um, you know, he was plotting his way in the video, but it stuck with me when he said, then we kill you, you know. 
and he was dead right after. If you cover a story like this, then we kill you. And he was dead right after, within a few hours after. So, man. Uh, and another thing I noticed too, you know, General Star. We talk more about it. So, Lee Gates TV got gunned down. I have a story right here on two media outlets. And then Bounty Killer. Bounty Killer says, from the article I'm reading, I never said to me. Merciless dead from a drug overdose. Dancehall entertainer Merciless recently passed away. For those of you who've been under a rock or in a church or somewhere where you're not into secular things. I know some people just go to two shoe. They don't even know who Merciless is. They don't know who Lady Sa is. They don't know who, no, they don't know Wagwan. Right? So for those people, Dancehall entertainer Merciless, probably the greatest clash artist in dancehall music. <laughs> Next to Vibes Cartel, of course. Um, you know, you have your bounty killer, your beanie man and stuff, but he was the only one to ever defeat the greats in one night. Bounty, beanie, and uh, ninja man. All three of them, Merciless won, defeat the three of them in a one night. Nobody else has ever done anything like that in dancehall. New age dancehall artists, them afraid for clash, so... You know, we, we got to wait until we get some brave artists come up, which there's something bubbling now, which I'll cover on another. All right. Sick, sick. All right. Something bubbling now. I'll cover on another video. But anyhow, apparently Bounty did a radio interview. And Bounty Killer boss out said, Merciless dead from drug overdose. We're going to get into that. The details of that, because me never know that, right? And I'm sure you didn't know that either. But you know the whole thing of why he didn't attend the funeral. A lot of people are beat Bounty, you know, and I say, yo, bad man, I can never attend the man's funeral. Or you have, a, have him up for that same clash that I just explained to y'all about. And they never gave him his flowers. You know, if any DJ beat the three greatest in a clash in one night... They would hail him king for years to come. They never acknowledged Merciless. They never gave him his flowers while he was alive. So a lot of people were saying, yo, Bounty should at least go to the funeral, man. Him dead. So if you never gave him flowers when he's alive, you could have given it to him when he's dead. He can't do nothing with it now, right? And Bounty didn't go. He was getting a lot of backlash from the crowd for that. You will hear his response this morning uh, to include that piece of statement right there that uh, overdose or drugs kill Merciless. We'll talk about that. A teenager ended up killing parents in Jamaica. But they discovered that before he did that, he actually did a thorough research on how to kill your parents. We'll have to get into that. May I tell you now? It be your own. It be your own. That's why sometimes me go into my room, go sleep at night time, me literally lock the door and keep my gun close by. Because, yeah... Um, if somebody break in my house, then I get pepper up. But I'm talking about my own damn kids because you never know what's going on with these children. We live in a weird world. And I, I'm, yes, I'm paro, but I've seen it too many times now. You know what I'm saying? Picnic, your tech for them, PlayStation. Missy one little youth the other day. I think his mom took away his phone. It was on social media. I'm sure a lot of you saw it. It might have taken away his phone. Then you mash up the house. All the granite kitchen counter. I may not even know how him broke that. Because granites are a strong rock. The man broke the granite kitchen counter and two broke up the whole house. The house looked like hurricane storm passed through it and blow over everything for his phone. Right? Him tear up the house like if him did catch a mother and would have tear her up to like how him tear up the house. I'm not playing no games with them. So this youth, we're going to get into that story. And then there was a young lady who was celebrating her 21st birthday. And she decided to take 21 shots, shot glass. Again, somehow no, it's good to shoot. You know, I think gunshot, right? Oh my God, she got shot 21 times on her 21st birthday. No, she decided to celebrate by taking 21 shots. You know, a little shot glass, you knock them box up. She said 21 upon her 21st. Well, that never ended too good. So we're going to talk about that too. And I'm going to elaborate more. Because there's a lesson in all of this. Come in, also, some young people are watching, you know, me not that old enough. But for those who are way younger, when I was young and wild like you, I got, I got a news and message for you 
right? Sometimes that's good to take it from those who've been there and done it. So you don't have to go there and do it. Only a fool fool person will listen to people and watch people go through stuff and still feel like, hmm, I want to experience them trials and tribulations for myself. Most of us are like, man, if somebody had told me, I wouldn't have. You know, if somebody had shown me, I wouldn't have. Be one of those. And don't be one of the ones them where, yeah, him put him on the stove, store, me see one off him, and him not have no hand no more. Let me go try it. I think it's a bird, me need a, and fry your hand too. Watch people's struggles, listen to them, and learn. And you don't have to go down that route, right? That's what elders are here for. That's why me, me listen to big, big people. Because them don't do it already. Ain't nothing new. None of us are doing anything new. It pays to listen. None of us are doing anything new. You hear that? All right. So I'm going to start out now with Lee Gates. <laughs> uh, first of all, let me say this. You see the whole dumb bad mind, 826 people in here this morning, 172 thumbs up. All right. I'm going to ask you to thumbs up the video as we go along. It helps the videos to trend on YouTube, and it helps our video to rank higher on YouTube like you, I like I heard Lee Gates saying in his video, some of our people believe that, yo, them they on YouTube, them I make holy for money. And you know what? They make no holy for money. The dude actually was doing his homework, right? And he was trying to tell people that I probably bought 13 cents, 11 to 13 cents per person is what you get. Okay? You don't know why people think you get about $13 per person. Who tune in for your stuff? So you must make, and then they sit there and count, and they're like, "Rotted Soflo have eight hundred people panda this morning, thirteen dollar person. I'm rich today." So when them see me out the road, them think I'm supposed to be wealthy rich, and it's not that. That's not the case. That's why when you hear me make statements like, "If I had to depend on this to live a luxurious lifestyle," well, as some people claim, may that suffer like dog out the road. Understand? So asking people, um. Asking Andre Stevens call you out Friday night. Crystal G, I'm not really tuning into other people's stuff. So since you are tell me, and this is how I find out, when call me out, say, you can tell me that too. All right? Uh, to, to, uh, see, and I asked for thumbs up, and like 20 more people hit the thumbs up. 870-something people watching. Hit the thumbs up button, please. That's what the dude that they murdered, Lee Gates, was talking about. What I noticed with his channel was, last night, yesterday when I got the news, his channel was at 5,000 subscribers. That's it. He had 5,000 subscribers. I remember having 5,000 subscribers on YouTube, and I was so excited because this was a journey for me. I started out, I had to do like over 100 and something videos before me even reached nowhere near 5,000 and something subscribers. And, you know, people are telling me, go, go put that down on the fence, something to do with your time, man. That, 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 it's futile. It's not going to work. And I believed in it. And I believed it was going to work. And I believed I had something to give. Sometimes you see, you, your vision is given to you, right? So you can't make people talk your out of your thing. Sometimes it's best for you to stop talking to people about your vision and just execute and then let them witness. So, Almost everybody who I spoke to about it was on some, it's not going nowhere. I used to post videos, the same people them where you used to laugh after me, because my video them would sit on YouTube and it would be 46 views in 30 days. Yeah. So you can imagine how excited I was the first time I put up a video and the video said 1,000 views in one week. I was like, oh my God, I get 1,000 views in a one week. I was getting 46 video views. In like a month. And we slowly built and slowly built and slowly built. Yeah? Enough people don't know that they are come from them place. They are that far and so dedicated to this. Them think you just jump on here and just do this. So again, hit my thumbs up, please. I do this for you. I do this for me too. Right? And I appreciate you being here. I take from you and you take from me. We give to each other. I make sure I give you the best of me on a daily basis. So I expect just to hit the thumbs up from you shouldn't be that hard. All right. Anyhow, Lee Gates, his story. I noticed him, his channel had 5,000 views, seen? And I'm driving in from Georgia, Atlanta yesterday to Florida. 
By the time I reached home yesterday, after getting the news, I see 5.2 something views. I woke up this morning, right, and went back there again and saw 6,000 views. So let me say this again. Bad mind, dirty people. It's okay now for you to go subscribe to his channel. You've been watching him for the longest because his channel has 5,000 views and then it has videos that had over 10,000. 5,000 subscribers, but videos that had over 10,000 uh, views on it, right? So it, it's okay now for you to go subscribe to a dead man channel because him can benefit from it now, right? Or him dead, let me hit subscribe. That's some dirty rotted way of thinking. It's like a video I was going that's going around now on Instagram where the little boy assured the principal's Mercedes Benz. And he was like, look on a dirty boy, look on a principal. Um, look for him a drive. And look where everybody else I drive. Everybody have them Subaru and them little cheap this and little cheap that a big Benz him have, big Mercedes Benz him have. Watch me, I'm gonna do it now. And you know, I had to leave a comment like, yeah, bad man starting at them young. It's inbreded in them. Hey, little boy. Principal never turned principal overnight, you know. Yeah. The heights of great men reached and kept were not attained by sudden flight, but they, while their companions slept. So while you did there, yeah, that sleep and snooze and you put them cock up and drool and run out of your mouth, somebody was working their ass off. And now you see them shining with something. And watch Pana one there, watch him. I bend him, I drive, you know, everybody else, I drive cheap car. Do you know what he had to do to get that? Do you know how many hours of lampshade studying him have to do to get that? All when electricity gone and them something there. So we need to dig out the bad man out ourselves, my friend. You understand? All right. With that said, into the story, our man. Uh, Lee Gates. I feel a type of way because this is a warning to me too. This hits very close for me because Clarendon will come from. The brother just said, then we kill you. You are film them kind of, um, cover them kind of story here. And he even went as far as to say, some of them vlogger here, you know, me hear them I call up some people near me. If you wonder sometime if them crazy or something. He was dead five hours after, my friend. Yeah. There's a video. His last video that he put up, he was flying a drone. And him fly the drone over one part, one place. Me hear somebody in the background talking to him and the person say, what go on, brother? He said, yeah, man, everything good, blah, blah, blah. They're talking, you know, but the drone is out. If you watch the video, the, the drone battery start to die, and it says, time to bring the drone home, right? Me here, the person said to him, you know, yeah, car, you know, boy, you're all right. I fly to something there, car, you know them, you know, and them youth there, but this I go feel like, say, you know how we talk already. You know, really spell everything out. Boy, you know, and them man over this I go feel like, say, you know, me, I say, I and there's something they are going. In other words, you know, and them Monday over this, I go feel like say a surveillance, you have them under and them something there, yeah, expose them thing from the sky, no flying no drone around ya. Me come from a time where when time you got dance, video man in there. Of course, the ladies used to jump out, walk out in the video from your cute girl, and the whole of the woman them ray, yeah, and a bad man and gunman in a corner like this. And when time the video man turn the light over there, you hear move that bumble cloth from over your boy. A man in a corner turn up. So on them. Me used to make sure me stay upon the other side of the dance. Anytime me go dance, I miss a man with foot on wall and stand up. So with hot dog in a face. And I run video man, but don't come around your boy. Me ask people, come young them time, then me I go dance before me supposed to go dance. Me ask people, I want over there. So why the video man can't go over there. And them say, yo, that youth they wanted, you know, my youth, they wanted in a Jamaica and reach a foreign and them thing there and hide out, they hide out up your video man, can't go around them place that the poor video man sometimes don't know. And them grab all the video man and call him up and take all them camera, take it away, take away him footage and these things. Yo, take me off of that. So him flying the drone over certain areas. And remember, I told y'all, I said it's a vision for me to go to Jamaica. Bring my drone and everything. And I did bring the drone down there and film. I wanted to do a series that would live forever. Documenting Jamaica customs and cultures by parish. We have 14 parishes. 
my dream was to travel 14 parishes because in every parish in Jamaica, you will find the same food being cooked differently, being spiced differently. They speak differently, all these things, right? And my dream was to actually get into all that and show that to the world. But then me, I said to myself, say, this is going to turn out dangerous because I'll be there flying a drone. The sad shit is this. Listen, Mark Waynes and another white boy, them go down there to Jamaica and they fly their drone everywhere all the time and nobody bothers them. And go look at Mark Wayne numbers on YouTube. It's a channel with um, over a million subscribers and their videos get hundreds of thousands of views. Every video. This is how we continue to empower other people with our own stuff. But we can't capitalize off our own stuff because few we own people we kill we but it's okay for strangers to come in and capitalize off of it mark wayne is not white he looks um asian but the person he was with when he went there to do the food cooking thing and flew the drone it's another uh youtuber that does food but they met up in jamaica and they meet up with food boss big up the food boss and they did, I mean, I don't know if a food boss is name. I think it is food boss. But anyway, they met up with him. But them go there and fly them drone all the time. And then there's one that works with Ross Mocker. He's white. Him fly him drone all the time. Nobody no bother him flying his drone. But as soon as we go there and lift up a drone, yo, dog, make sure so you don't fly that over a bad man place, you know, brother. I want it around here. I do surveillance, the police. Some of them are undercover, you know. Some of them are informer, you know. And them kind of something that you have to pay me for that in a boy. That's us. That's us. Destructive as hell to our own. Right? But anyhow, his story goes like this, man. Um, I don't know if you follow him. I like to put a face. Let me move my coffee real quick. Hold on, let me take a sip. I like to put a face to the stories before we do the stories. So this is he. All right. That's the brother with them kill. Lee Gates TV. Some people call him Lee Lee. There was a lot of, especially on Facebook, there's a lot of tributes going out to him. A lot of people saying, yo, I'm grew up in that area. He's a youth when I'm lazy. He's a really trying youth. He'm going to try anything and everything and, you know, try to make something of himself. That kind of thing. The vlogging thing apparently was starting to work for him. You know, for us, 5,000 subscribers is a lot. For other people, it's like, eh, you're not even on the radar yet. You know, but for us, 5,000 subscribers is a lot. So it was happening for him. It was happening for him. Anyhow, popular blogger, Leon Lee Gates McNeil. He was shot and killed at a party in Hayes Clarendon on Saturday night, hours after he commented on an earlier double murder that was committed the same day in a parish in a neighboring community. The 36-year-old is the founder and owner of Lee Gates TV and Entertainment, which has covered several events in Clarendon, including the funeral of the woman and her four children who were slain in June in Cocoa Peace in the parish of Clarendon. I remember being on this live here. And somebody said in the comment section, if you no want to see the funeral, go tune in to Lee Gates TV. And I was like, who is Lee Gates? But me write it down on the board, yeah, so. But I didn't want to go see a funeral, so I didn't tune in. How I many want to watch funeral, right? I didn't tune in. But somebody here said it in the comment section. See? Any, so when I go check his channel out, that's what he does. He's like live on the ground, on the scene kind of thing. In relation to the killing in Hayes on Saturday, the Hayes police reported that about 8.55 p.m. on Saturday, McNeil, which is he, was at a party when a group of men allegedly came up and just opened fire at them. When the shooting subsided, another man was found suffering from gunshot wounds. Both injured persons were assisted to the hospital where McNeil succumbed to his injuries and the other man was admitted in stable condition. Police are theorizing that McNeil and the injured men 
were probably in the wrong place at the wrong time, as gangsters may have been the intended target of the attackers. Hmm. Meanwhile, McNeil in a video earlier on Saturday, which was posted hours before his death, decried the state of shooting across the country while he traveled in his motor car. If you listen to the video and watch him, he kept saying like, boy, I'm going to know what go on in a Jamaica kind of. I don't know why all this shooting and why all this killing and five hours later I'm dead by shooting. When I tell you guys that, oh, so flow, cover that story there. Why, why you not cover this? Why you not cover that? And I tell you all that, listen, some of these stories are too close to me, too close for me. Y'all, please believe me, okay? My face is out there. I don't hide. I'm going to walk around Jamaica with no cover over my face. I go to Jamaica on a regular basis. I walk wrong by myself. Everywhere I go. See? So, well, not really by myself, but you know, mostly by myself kind of thing. Uh, I don't have no big entourage of security or anything. And it's dangerous out there. It's dangerous out there. That's why sometimes I see some stuff happen and I just leave it alone. I can report on it. I can give my two cents. I choose to leave it alone and find something else. Because that one there, too close. Or this one, me know some of them people there. Some of me stay away from this because I know where that could go. That kind of stuff. And it's sad that it has to be like that for us. But that's the way it is for us. Yeah? Okay, so the two men succumbed to their injuries. I swear, me no know what go on. He said, so much shooting. Me no know why. Why so much? Why so much things are going on in a them time, yeah? Is what he said. We need God. May I wonder if nobody no fear God again. That's exactly what he said in the video. It is heart-wrenching. It is heartbreaking. Why so much shooting at Guan? He questioned. He was reacting to news early on Saturday that the taxi operator and a passenger were shot and killed by gunmen posing as passengers on the Portland Cottage main road in Clarendon. Those deceased from that incident that he reported on was 39-year-old Derek Matthews, otherwise called Red Fox, and a taxi operator of Wyndham Hall Town, or Wyndham, Wildman Town, sorry, Portland Cottage, and 47-year-old Michael Newland of Board Villa, Lionel Town, both from Clarendon. Reports are that about 4.10 p.m., Matthews was transporting Newland and another man in his vehicle, and on reaching a section of the Portland Cottage main road, Matthews pulled the vehicle over to let off another man who had asked for a stop. Drop me off right as a driver. Further reports are that the man, the same man who asked for it, let me off right as a driver, pulled out a firearm when he jumped out of the vehicle, shot both of them that was left in the vehicle and killed both men right there. He had it planned all along. I killed them man and I just I try to figure out which part to do it. All right, let me off right up as a driver. Driver stop and let him off. Him pull out, kill both of them. Left them there. And Lee Gates TV drove over to the scene. Because I was watching his video, which is still up on YouTube. I wish I had known him or they had reached out. Because I would have told him that, yo, certain things you can't post on YouTube. Because you're not going to make no money off it anywhere in my youth. Yeah, YouTube terms and policies have changed. Way back seven years ago when we first started, YouTube would uh it was YouTube wasn't even monetized yet back then, but they allowed you to post everything. So you could have post anything. Woman get catch and have sex, you can't see the woman and ride the man, the man has skin her up that way. You could post anything on YouTube. YouTube came out and said, Nope, no more of that material and remove it. And if we find it on your channel, we're gonna strike it. And if we strike you three times in one month, your whole channel is gone. So people had to go back and clean up them channel and take off all the stuff that could get you struck. He was posting stuff directly from the scene. The body slumped over in the car, gunshot wound to the head, holding on. No, Kai, go. Daddy soon come, okay? Go, mommy. Gunshot wound to the head and all that. And he's posting it to YouTube. You can't post that on YouTube. Because if his goal was to make some money, like he said, the, that wouldn't have worked. All right? you, you have to pretty much keep a clean platform. 
or find a way. That's why we came up with WhatsApp chat room. And then the stuff we talk about here, you can go see the actual videos in the chat room because we have other people that send them to us and we put them in the chat room so you can actually see it. But we can't post it on YouTube else it could lead to us losing the entire platform. See? So with that said, on reaching a section of the Port um, Portland Cottage Main Road, Matthews pulled the vehicle over to let off the other man who had asked, driver, let me off right us off for a stop. Further reports are that the man pulled a firearm and shot both Matthews and Newland, and the culprit then fled the scene. The police were alerted to the area, and both men were seen with multiple gunshot wounds inside the vehicle. They were subsequently pronounced dead at the hospital. On learning about those killings, McNeil, which is Lee Gates TV, took a Facebook Live to urge his followers to be careful out there because a whole heap of things are going on and a whole heap of people involved in some things. You underground. You right wrong which part it happened. Let me tell you. Me know my people them so good, right? If you're not steeped in Jamaican culture, we can talk around you and you don't know what go on and it, the whole light involve you. You see, when you're in a people's space, don't bother talk about some whole heap of people around you involved in some things and, yeah, man did it with them gun pan them ways to talk about we might talk about whole heap of people involved in some things around you. I, I we might drop hint for Little more I'm going to call my name rude boy about a whole heap of things, a whole heap of people involved in a whole heap of things around here. Who are a whole heap of people, youth? Sometimes you just best not to say a damn thing, right? And he was just too close to all that. Too close to all that. And like I said, if you go to his YouTube channel right now, the video is still there up there on YouTube. I'm sure you. The video long. You have to go watch the whole video. But somewhere in the video... You're going to see him turn his camera on the car with the man them slump over. He's even describing like him still have money in a theme hand and something else in a theme hand and something. So you know, say I don't know robbery this. This was a hit. I saw him attack, right? Pan the video. On learning about these killings, he took to Facebook Live urging his followers, careful out there because a whole heap of things are going on and a whole heap of people involved in some things. Social media users have been reacting with shock. And have largely expressed their sorrow at the news that Matt Neal, more popularly referred to as Lee Gates, has been a victim of rampant criminality that he had earlier decried. This is so terrible. I just started following him after the funeral of the mother and her kids in Clarendon. Lee, somebody else says, Lee Lee, my heart is broken because I'm calling Lee Lee to. Lily, my heart is broken. I did not expect this news at all. To his family, my deepest condolences, wrote another person. Another Facebook user said, it was great working with you, bro. We have worked on so many projects. It was a joy to see you campaign to help poor people and the people that are in need. You will always be remembered. Cramp them, Bill Gates, Lee Gates TV as a general and a poor people defender. Hmm. Yeah, nobody, none of our people really care if you're a poor people defender. Them not going to look upon you when them turn the gun upon you and say, yo, don't pull the trigger. You know, so that youth are good, a good youth, you know. Holy for people him help, you know. Holy for people him advocate for help for, you know. No, them all shoot you any friggin' ways. That's just how cold, callous, and dirty-minded a lot of our people are. Even, even, even sometimes when you're helping their own people, like them own close family members, then we come kill you. Same way. They just figure, hey, kill the goose that laid the golden egg. We find another goose where lay one next golden egg. But you, you have to go. They feel like kill today. That because what was their purpose for killing him? There's another story out there surrounding his uh death. That was from the star. I mean, I make up this stuff, I tell you where I get my stuff from. Because I mean, I people say, yeah, go listen to SoFlo, because SoFlo know the whole thing. I the star made us read that from. And from this article right here, which you have to pay for from the Gleaner, I'm going to give you this one. All right? This one from the Gleaner says, let me see. Cops are now probing. This is a follow-up. And it has two comments that come with it. 
Cops are now probing if the Clarendon bloggers slaying is actually linked to the Portland Cottage double murder. The double murder that happened earlier. Me don't know if him, how they're probing to see if it's linked and why would he go over there and show the scene if it was like, if him, do have anything to do with any of that, right? But here we are again. And this is the picture that you will see in my icon. I have some to get it from. All right. That's him right there. Right, that's all. Again. All right. And this, and, and there's more to the story. Fame story now, in a day, Glena says, mm, okay, so I have to sign in. All right. The Clarendon police are now investigating whether the murder of popular Clarendon blogger Leon Lee Gates McNeil, who was killed in Hayes in the parish, is actually linked to a double murder in the neighboring Portland Cottage community hours earlier on Saturday. A man who was also shot and injured alongside Lee Gates or McNeil is reportedly from the Portland Cottage community. He was with the blogger. He is from the community where the double murder just took place. He was hanging out, chilling with the vlogger. When them pepper the blogger, them pepper him too. Hmm. The police are also scouting for clues in McNeil's alleged involvement. McNeil, the blogger. In his alleged involvement in lottery scamming and drugs-related activities. They say that he had a checkered past. Having been convicted of drugs, drug charges in 2016. It gets deeper. Me never know none of that. And I'm sure a lot of people don't know any of that. Because that's not how he presents himself. I mean, I'm not going to come tell you that I did five years in prison... Um, and then blah, blah, blah. Me, I got to tell you, unless me way up in a me sitting, that's not how you start your platform off, though. So you all got to come and say what he said in his video, right? Me used to cook. And then me go from Dessa till me become the lead chef in the kitchen. And then me go from Dessa till me save up my money and buy myself a little taxi, put it on the road. And then me go from that to a little minivan. And that's the story I heard from him. I never hear nothing about no conviction for no drugs are serving no time for nothing, or a checkered past, or lot of scamming, or any of that. But that is what this article from The Gleaner is giving this morning. And this is part of The Gleaner way off the pay for, by the way. Anyhow, um, McNeil, who's 36 years old and the founder of League Gates TV and Entertainment, he had expressed grave concerns, as we said earlier, about Jamaica's homicide rate in a live Facebook video, and he referred to the Portland Cottage double murder five hours earlier before his death. In the live video, McNeil had informed his viewers that he was on his way to the scene of the murder. And he also showed video footage of a car with the bodies of the victims still inside them. After giving alleged reports on the incident, the blogger added that he would be getting further information for his viewers and subscribers. Dangerous shit. Very dangerous shit. First of all, you're live, right? You're live. Why are you telling people where you going live? You want to meet you there? On my other channel, which is Hot Topics TV, it was a dude, a rapper. He was on live. And him said, y'all niggas soft anyways. F y'all. F all y'all. Matter of fact, y'all don't want no smoke. Hey, matter of fact, dropped his location. He said, I'm pulling up to the crib right now. Whoever want it, come get it. Okay. So said, so done. His name was Rolly Bands. Go look on my next channel. Them show up. Just like him, tell them. Why are you telling people on live where you heading? And about meet me there. This is the kind of world we live in. You drop your geo tracker location and it's over. I'm, you never get more information. Okay. That's dangerous. That's too close to you. In the first incident, 39-year-old Derek Matthews, otherwise called Red Fox, a taxi operator of Wildman Town in Portland Cottage, 
and 47-year-old Michael Newland of Lionel Town, also in the parish, were gunned down. Reports from the Lionel Town police says that about 4.10 p.m. I'm very surprised, though, about the part where they put out that the police is probing concerning Lee Gates' um, involvement in lotto scamming and uh, all that stuff, um, and a checkered past and all that. I'm very surprised, but I mean, we live in that kind of world, you know what I'm saying? Nobody, no no scammer is going to come out and tell you, say, yeah, man, a scam me scam on, on TV like this. A scam me scam. You see my car, my nice, be my outside. Yeah, scamming money that, you know, see my nice house. Scamming money, give me this. Scam, yeah, I'm, right now, may I try to get a big lick. See, no, nobody's going to come and tell you that. Most criminals are going to tell you I'm very much against criminality. I'm not into criminal behavior. You can't come out come boast about I uh, only stupid one them do that. So you can't really put stuff past anybody, so to say. I don't want to add insult to injury, so I'm not accusing him of anything. I'm just saying I'm surprised that what's printed here in the papers about him concerning. You understand? All right. I'm sure in family I watch this now and I say, I hope you know I mix up my brother's name and I know scamming nothing in a soft floor. I'm not. I'm reading directly what was printed in the Gleaner. And before I was reading what was directly printed in the Star. Reports from the Lionel Town Police says that 4.10 p.m. Matthews was transporting Newland and another man who then pulled out, pulled over to let a passenger off along the Portland Cottage Main Road. It is alleged that the same passenger then brandished a firearm, opened gunfire, and hit both of the men in the vehicle. You know what's creepy and eerie? Lee Gates TV live, while he was on the live, he stopped to pick up somebody. And I hear him saying, ah, who that? Who that I come with you? And the person said something, and he was like, no, no, don't bring nobody where you don't know. No, bring nobody where you don't know. Come, come, like, come by yourself. No, bring nobody in there where you don't know. Where you can't vouch for you know, one time gone in a man, you there Jamaica walking on, you go so. Anybody stop and pick you up, you know? Where I go? Boy, I'm just go up the road up so and but boy, a long walk that man, jumping in the back, man, come and gone, and that's it. Nowadays it's like zoom, fly right past you, can't nobody know and pick up them killer. You don't know what people have on their mind. You see a youth a flag you down a beg for a ride. And you don't know, you picking up somebody who already has a plan. May I kill the driver, take the car, drive it, go to town, go party, drop off the car, I want to chop shop, make little money, take my bus, come back a country. It's a weird friggin' time we're living in. Cold. You heard him say that too, right, Lady J? Yeah, it was a lot of stuff going on around him. I'm telling you, I pay attention to a lot of stuff. Maybe that the average civilian does not pay attention to. That's why I watch I watch closely, and my flags were just going up like the whole time. Reports from his police are that the same thing I said before. 855 McNeil approach was approached by a group of men who opened fire at them. A group of men. The police were alert alerted and they found the vlogger and another patron suffering from gunshot wounds. And McNeil succumbed to his injuries at the hospital while the other man was admitted in critical condition. Why so much murders? Why so much shooting? Why so much crime? We have to ask the question. That's what he said. In his first video, first minute of the approximately 21 minutes long video that was posted on his Facebook page, Lee Gates TV, the video began streaming sometime after 4.30 p.m., when McNeil aired his grouse over the double murders, which occurred at 4.10 p.m., went live at 4.30 with it. McNeil had also described the spate of crime in a country as heartbreaking. So he was basically saying the same stuff that we're always saying, like, boy, frig up, the place are run red. You know, why all this? It looked like people don't remember God. Nobody not care about God no more. Everybody have this killy killy thing on their mind. You know, we have a disagreement. Kill him. People may ask, you know, please, you know, just be careful out here because a whole heap of things are going on and a whole heap of people involved in a, some little things where you have to just be careful when you're there around certain people, is what he said. Hmm. 
Wow. That's his last. You have to just be careful when you're there around certain people. People just be careful because a whole heap of things are going and a whole heap of people in a certain things. He's also the founder of the charity-based Lee Gates Foundation. He has been lauded as a philanthropist and a humanitarian. He is also the face of town crier services in Clarendon. I think they're meant to be courier services. He, he became a well-known blogger after his coverage of the murder of the mother and her four children in Coco Peace Clarendon in June. And he also made strides through his coverage of the Donnelly Donaldson murder case as well. Sean Barnswell, counselor for the Hayes Division, has described McNeil's death as untimely. He said that it is unfortunate that this law-abiding citizen can't go out and have a social to mingle, to have a get-together because of the spate of shootings taking place within our community space. It's really sad, and this crime monster is a leech itself on the people. You can't go to a game of football anymore. You can't go to a party. You can't sit and hang out on the corner with your friends or even at your gate. You can't walk on the street in peace because the elements of crime, they're everywhere. This is the counselor for Hayes Division. He noted that Saturday night's incident had left residents traumatized. The counselor made an appeal to anyone with information leading to any kind of thing where you know about this. Please get in contact with the investigators. We cannot keep silent because it can be you. It can be your family member next time around. So let us join hands and have all hands on deck as we tackle this crime monster and put it to rest once and for all. Hmm. I don't know about all that. Up to September 17th, a total of 63 people have been killed in Clarendon. Around my place, 63. The figure shows this is a 17% reduction in homicides when compared to last year. Because by the time this time last year, 76 people had already been killed in that same place there. So the place are run red. Like I said before, though, let me read them two comments here to you and then we go. If you dealt in drugs, lotto scamming, or you were convicted of drugs in the past, you have to be extra careful that your enemies don't find you easily. To broadcast your location on social media is not a wise thing. R.I.P. Another one says, unfortunately, he never took the warning that he himself issued. Hmm. You see, people, that's why I'm mean, like to say this. You see the stuff I speak about and the way I encourage people to live on social media? I want to actually be living that myself. And I try my best to be that myself. That's why I say when you see me in person, you're going to see the same person that I speak about. Like one time, I tell you, say, like, me boomy. I am. Me boomy. Me boomy without YouTube. Me not, and I, and I say, I'm afraid of people from YouTube. Me boomy from other issues, but it transfers over into this. I'm very aware of my surroundings then. We just use the word boomy because, it, you know, it's more. But I'm very aware of my surroundings. I'm, my, my senses are heightened when I'm out in public spaces, right? And I'm very leery of people. So don't be offended if I don't just throw my trust to you like that. Nobody go, what's off law? Watch me suffer like him better than me. So no, me, I watch you for see if you can do something to me. Me, I watch you for see if you give me a vibe. But I feel like so I need to skip left you so because now one now no have no good intention for you. Yeah, me, me, I pick up on energy and vibes, them kind of thing there. I told you all before, if me and my wife argue me sleeping in our next part of the house in our room and lock the door and keep my gun close. Me say woman kill man in a them sleep. Me say man kill them woman in a them bed. Me, me not take no chances in a this life with nobody. God give me me one life, I may live me one life to the fullest, and I'm not giving it away so easily. You understand? So if you hear me tell us and not even she no get them kind of trust there, you must know. Imagine a stranger. Why? Unfortunately, he never took the warnings that he himself issued seriously. 
Hmm. Still baffled about a checkered past stuff and a drug conviction in 2016. Mm. <laughs> and then Henry says, hot oil in your ears. Vicky Victory says, please be careful, so flow. You know what's funny? The night before, so yesterday is when I heard of this, right? Somebody sent it to me. So flow, you have to cover this because I wrote now you're a place. All right. The night before that, and I, and I was joking about it with my son. Because as we were coming back to Florida driving, we had talk. I said, yo, I had a dream last night. And the dream, one guy show up with two guns in his hand. And he started shooting me. He was shooting my legs with both guns, right? And one of them jammed. And when he was shooting me, I was laughing. And because the, I was laughing because the gun jamming, he didn't know what to do with the gun, right? See, I, I have gun training, obviously. So if my gun jam, I know the procedure to unjam the gun quickly and keep firing. So him, I shoot me with two guns and one jam, and him throw with the gun with jam. And he kept shooting at my legs. And I was getting hit in the dream with the other one. I mean, I say, what kind of rotty dream this can be? Jump up out of the dream. But I was telling my son about the dream. And I was asking him, do you dream a lot? What do you dream about? And all this stuff. You know, my daughter says she dreams every night, one of them. My son says he barely ever dreams. So when he dreams, he normally remembers his dream forever. Like long dreams. Like, like long time gone after the dream, he'll still remember it. And I thought, yo, this right here, I have to cover this card. This is a warning for me. This is I take this as a warning for me. I'm the kind of person who believes that nothing goes by you by accident. Everything that comes my way is for me to see, for me to learn from, and for me to be aware right? So if, if it passed me and I didn't hear about it, it's because there was nothing in it for me to learn. The universe wanted me to see this, to take from this what I must, and some a seat. See? So I'm not take this lightly. I'm not involved in no scamming. I'm not involved in no nothing. And you hear me say that, yeah, a scammer now going to tell us that I'm involved in no nothing. But trust me when I tell you, I'm not in nothing. I am affiliated with the United States Army. And I keep it that way. I just came back from an army base, Fort Benning, Georgia. So still very much attached. But other than that, no gang thing for me, no nothing for me. And none of that. But stuff can still reach you. Just like this vlogger said in his video, that's the part that hit me. Him say, people will kill you. Nope. Either because you cover them story here or because car people just jealous. They wouldn't be jealous of you because you're covering the story. They'd be jealous of you because you have the wherewith to put yourself together, grab a microphone and a camera, go upon a scene live, create your own platform. Even when people are laugh and say, no, I'm going work, and then it start work, then they automatically start thinking, he's getting about $13 a person, and him have 1,400 and sitting people upon their live right now, so a whole heap of money that the boy I make. Just that. Simple as that. And they will take your life for it. Sad. You know? I don't know the ins and outs of his story. I don't know what really caused this. I don't know if he was the intended target. I don't know none of that. All I know is what's been given to us. And the little piece of my PF I forget from the gleaner. And that's it. And I give it to you with my own commentary. We learn from others. See? That's the thing there. My condolences goes out to his family because I did somebody's son. I mean, I know if him have no children. He's 30-something years old. I don't know if he has any children. But if he does, that's more fatherless children right there. Daddy gone. Succumbed to violence. To be raised by... <laughs> at the mercy of whoever. Mm-hmm. So I go... Sad. Sad as Ross. I think he knew and probably brave or stupid to be putting his face out there. That's my conclusion. You think he knew? Why? I don't know. I, know. I don't think his past had to do with his death. Could be the same person he was with was the target. Right. See, uh, I'm not going to act like I know any of it. I don't. But you know how we do already. We talk and hash stuff out and pick sense out of nonsense and think outside the box. Because I know society wants you to think in a box. 
but most truth come from outside that box that they want you to think in. So we go outside the box. There's a part in the report where they said the guy that he was with is actually from the community. He's from a neighboring community. The guy where him did that with though was from the community where the two where the double murder took place. I mean, that's clear. That's clear. How come them shoot up two men over there so in your community and then five hours later shoot you up in our neighboring community? Hmm. Maybe he was just a casualty of war. Or maybe he was involved in something with the guy he got killed with or got shoot up with. Because the guy didn't die. He's in critical condition, but he's not dead. Hmm. Well, the youth did try to do something good with himself anyway. Call him, call him poor people ambassador. He was advocating for help for a lot of people. I saw one video where he was talking about a single mom that had mental issues that was asking for help and then put out her number. And then I said, if any, any one of us, if you can donate that thing or if you can get in touch with somebody that could be able to help her and all this other stuff. So he was, he was trying to help people around him, you know? He was trying to help people around him. Just sad. Hmm. And y'all, um, we're moving right along. See? Bounty killer now. Revealed to Merciless. Revealed about Merciless. Um, shout out to Urban Island for this one. Bounty killer shared that the late dancehall artist Merciless died of a drug overdose. That's that's how the article start off. Me never know that. I'm sure Dan Mafia probably looking right now like Dan Mafia, big up yourself. Dan Mafia is gonna be in Canada um soon, by the way. Go over to his Instagram page and go check out his you know, check out his stuff and see what date he's gonna be in Canada sometime soon. But anyhow. Bounty Killer shared that the late dancehall artist Merciless died from a drug overdose. The warlord is responding to critics from some quarters of the dancehall fraternity who are bashing him for not attending the legendary Clash artist funeral. Merciless, whose real name is Leonard Bartley. He was laid to rest last week, Sunday, September 18th. The artist died on July 1st at a motel on Beechwood Avenue in St. Andrew. He was 51 years old. The 51-year-old artist's death shocked dancehall fans, particularly as he was not only young, but he was reportedly not ailing. He didn't have any kind of sicknesses or anything. Merciless Funeral was attended by the likes of people like Spraga Benz, Dan Mafia, Little Hero, Alize, Silver Cat, and Ghost, among others, who were spotted inside the St. Gabriel's Anglican Church in Maypen, Clarendon. However, Others who were reportedly close and highly respected by the late singer were curiously absent from his funeral. Both Bounty Killer and Beanie Man, who have a long history with Merciless, were also absent from the farewell, leading to fans of the late artist, including Tony Mataran, calling them out for not showing unity. I was on the road and I watched Tony Mataran video, you know, and him say he had prior engagements and he was overseas doing his thing. But if he was on the island, there's no way he could have missed it. And he further went on to say stuff like, trust me, if I did some community done or something, Dan wouldn't even have to pay enough of them money or them would have broke them neck figure perform at the people them something, right? And um, it's a shame to see that that's how those people from the dancehall fraternity treated one of their own, that kind of stuff. Anyhow, on Instagram, fans of Bounty Killer called them out for not attending the event, prompting an Acidic response from the artist. On Monday, Merciless manager Harvel Gaddafi Hart called out Bounty Killer and Beanie Man for not showing up at the funeral. Hart laments that Merciless family included Bounty and Beanie on his funeral program and shared that the late DJ spoke highly of both of them. Hart also lashed out at Capleton and Sizzler for not showing up at any of the events, neither the nine night nor the funeral. I remember him also saying, well, if you're a Rasta and you say you're going to go to a funeral, at least you could have shown up at the night night at the gathering them leading up to the funeral just to pay your respect. You know, people would have seen that and respected that. So over the weekend, if you notice, Sizzler hasn't responded. 
Capleton hasn't responded, and they won't, because they might take the higher road. I saw Rasta, though. Right? Rasta and go funeral and just accept that. Um, I'm guessing that's what they're... Is gonna be over the weekend. An audio clip of Bounty Killer. By the way, Bounty Killer fly out, and the Bounty Killer is performing. Well, he was. The headline says Bounty Killer performing in the Cayman Islands for the first time in sixteen years. For the first time in sixteen years, he's performing at the in Cayman Islands. Somebody says, be careful of defamation of character. Brother, me talk long. Me talk long. Any, any, any video you see me do, I can stand on it in court. Me not, no, me not worry about them something that come. Me and, me, I'm not defaming or causing any defamation to anyone's character. I have set this platform in a way where we read from links and discuss happening events. That's it. See, when I give my opinion, I am allowed to give an opinion. And I let people know it's an opinion. I don't tell nobody say about a fox. Unless me find out say a fox, and me have proof say a fox, then I report it as fox. My good man. All right. Um, over the weekend, an audio clip of Bounty Killer's interview on 104.1 FM radio station in Cayman Islands started making the rounds where the artist said that Merciless died of a drug overdose and he lashed out at critics who accused him of not showing up to the funeral. Oh, um, BM says, not you, so Flo. All right, BM. Yeah, so you can go find the 104.1 FM radio station in the Cayman Islands and find the Bounty Killer interview and hear what he said. Quote unquote, according to Urban Islands, a over dead the man go lose it in a dog. The DJ said, quote unquote, a drugs kill merciless enough. Is drugs kill merciless? They just shy to say it. No heart attack or nothing, brethren. A overdose kill the done. And we don't even want to elaborate upon the dead man or nothing. Unquote. But them for gwe, me nan go at no funeral. Me a bad man. No boy can ramp with me now. That's what the article says. End quote. Bounty Killer added that Merciless wasn't his friend, but rather he was a co-worker. Hence, he doesn't owe his family anything but condolences. Merciless wasn't my friend. He wasn't my colleague. He was just a co-worker. He said, Bounty has been criticized for the statement as the audio clip makes the rounds on social media. So if you see the clip or hear the clip out there, you know what the clip is out there, right? So Bounty doubled down and we said, yeah, remember what he said before, um, quote, uh, according to prior reports about the mural, which had... All the DJs that Merciless defeated, right? And we said, yo, that was a time in dance hall, a historical time. And it was in Merciless lifetime. So why would they not celebrate that? That's that's a huge accomplishment, you know? Why ignore that? Why not celebrate that? But apparently Bounty felt some kind of way about it. I don't know. Because he made reference to it. That's why he said, I'm not going to go down there. Figure, yeah, yeah, that was more like them celebrating him defeating me and being in a ninja man instead of celebrating his life. And I said that was a part of his life. That was actually a monumental part of his life, you know? And now him double down even more. Now it changed to an overdose, drugs kill him. <laughs> and me a bad man, I mean, I ain't got no funeral. I'm going to Well... Bounty Killer has spoken. See, take it how you want, take it. I see comments in the comment section says, one says it wasn't necessary to say that. I agree. Bounty said, a drug's kill him, but nobody no want to talk. Them over there going like he had some heart problem or some kind of something like that. And I know heart problem. Over there, so. I'm going to lose it, you know. I could say so much more, but I won't. 
because somebody that somebody that works somewhere that's so I have to careful on me same thing. Somebody will work somewhere around that so say your man so floor that ends there that ends there on a certain way, see me. Yeah, you either you can order the girl and you have a girl come in and you know where, wherever else you want and them thing there and get everything right that's so in your room and you know you do your thing and blah blah blah. Uh, reports said that this was a regular place that Merciless stayed whenever he was in town. I will just leave it at that. Yeah, him gone. He's not here to defend himself. He can't get up and say, I don't know drugs kill me. I don't know overdose nothing. Me just never feel good and me lay down and dead. He can't defend himself. So me not going to say nothing more on top of that. See, so condolences again to his family. And if Bounty say he want to go to the funeral and he's still doubling down on it, then hey, it's his life to live. Whether we want to see him as bad mind or anything or petty or anything, it's his choice. I mean... If I passed away today and a lot of y'all decided, hey, SoFlo TV, um, funeral, I keep down the street, you know, God forbid, because I'm not ready yet, but I don't know if you're ready, my lord. But anyhow, if SoFlo passed away today and my funeral, I keep down the street, and a lot of you decide, say, yo, I don't go to funeral, hey, I can't be mad at you. First of all, I wouldn't care. I'm a corpse now. <laughs> and, and then again, I want a spirit now floating freely outside of this body. So I care zero, right? Me dead. Do something good for me while me alive. Don't worry about me after me dead. That's my message. Do something good for me while I am alive. Like hit my thumbs up button while me there. That's it. Don't don't worry about don't worry about me after me dead. Hit my thumbs up button while me there here, cause that me can benefit from while I'm alive. Merciless gone. Bounty killer still there. That is that. I saw it go. Bounty will have his day with death as well. And when his time come, it will play out how it should play out. All right? And so will all of us. At the end of the day, do something for me while I'm there. Me no business about what you do after me dead. And that's factual. I really do. How y'all gonna care? How am I gonna care? You're gone. I never see a dead man ever roll over and say, Ross, them expensive flowers, yeah. A magic come put on for me coffin. Watch all Steve him. That bumbo, him owe me money, you know. 40 grand million, that big teeth in boy, and look ya. And you know, pay him back my money yet, and I can't tell him, say, yo, Steve, go put the money around on my granny. Give me granny the money. Nobody can say nothing, you're gone. That is it, my friend. That is it. Wifey, side chick, everybody come turn up over your grave. Two of them did they argue. So I check and make wifey know say so I was still with him his whole life. All the time when you thought we broke up, we were still doing our thing. You can't even get up for defend yourself and I lie the girl a lie. It's it, it gone. So all wifey have to go leggo that. She got malice you in debt now. Yeah, that bitch told me after you died that y'all was still doing it poor. You're not even there to defend yourself. <laughs> she, oh, not the sad girl. She just want to cause trouble. She does walk us. I mean, I put out my one in front now, you know, so my wife knows say, I know. <laughs> if them cut the life on me, just remember I'm not here to defend myself. So just let it rest. All right? Hit my thumbs up button while you here, man. While I'm here. And while me can benefit from it, I care zero about anything else after. Big up to Bounty Killer, same way, the general. And when him talk, like I told y'all before, though, I might feel some type of way about him not attending. But like I said before, one thing I respect about him, him no business how much backlash him get. The man then not take back where him say, him turn up on him square. That is something that you have to respect in a human being, whether you like what they stand for or not. When them stand up on them square, you could have licked bounty with one million lick from the man say, nope, it's nope. And it's going to be nope forever. So I, let it go. I hit that. I hit that. This is going to start to turn into some kind of who is trying to get more views and likes off of this thing here. Can Merciless no Merciless not care about it? Him gone. So how, how much longer are we gonna try to chastise Bounty Killer for this? Eh? <laughs> yes, Bounty true to himself, always purple raya. You have to respect that. Whether you like it or uh, listen, enough things him say when me not like. But me always remain. One thing, him at the general. See? And I told y'all why before. So 
So theme respect kind of tall. Like even when I'm I'm saying, yeah, that that DJ uh, number one and that one uh, number three and that one uh, number four. I mean, uh, Bounty is not even in that, even just over here, so because of what he has done for so many. And like I told y'all before, that man that could have rub up enough people and be filthy, wealthy, rich, sitting on top of the hill laughing like a draconian, and he didn't do it. So, him stubborn bad man, but I saw it go. I saw, I saw it go. It, it is him. It's him. And you can't force people to go to somebody funeral, my friend. If them no one go, they no one go, and the funeral gone already. Him didn't go. It, it done. It done. We can rewind it and make him go. We can't. So what we are talking about it more for? This is it, right? This is it. The new piece of information though about a drug skill, merciless and an overdose. I don't know nothing. This is Bounty performing for the first time in 16 years in Cayman Island. Missy Bounty on the plane. Every time I see him on a plane, we feel like say, it's the US he's coming to. So I'm like, yes, yeah, Bounty get back in visa. Oh, damn. I oversaw him ago. He did not get back the visa them yet. But I'd mean, like to see him get all them US visa and fly back in the place. A whole heap of money they are waiting for him. You know what I mean? He ruled um, top of the genre in 90s dance hall and them things. So people still there. If Bounty take a stage in the US now, venue pack out but him can't get a visa i think it has something to do with the hammer situation you know that happened in his past um somebody got hammered and then he went to church with god bless miss it with with his mom because his mom took um took him to the lord house and you can't be out here behaving like this kind of thing and he lost his visa behind that i think that's what it was but anyhow past thing that let me move on to our next one now um, more power to bounty. I'm still there. Go and live your life, cement your greatness. Um, and that's it. 21 year old, hmm. 21 deadly vodka shots. Woman who went on a drinking spree was found dead as friends poured birthday flour on her. I wonder if I flour suffocate her because she did drunk already. You know, when you're so drunk, you can't even lift up your hand for. for and then my poor flower pie, you them probably full up all our nose and mouth with flour. I'll be our friend, them kill her now. God have mercy. Yeah, King Biggs. Remember when Bounty said um about him take back him support for <laughs> him take back him support for the <laughs> for um when name there we well, win the competition over <laughs> over England the uh Dalton Harris. And then Dalton goes sit down for the youth lapping a picture and Bounty is like, no, that is not a pot. <laughs> oh, why is that? What, what is that? I take, I take back my support. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then beat the daylights out of Bounty in the um, social media or something. He never give a damn. Man don't sit down for a man lap around here. We don't encourage or endorse those things. <laughs> I'm taking back my support. I don't care who I'm giving their support. My support, I'm taking it back. Hey, I saw the thing go. Y'all go fight the man for him support. Eh? <laughs> ah, those can't be friends and allow her to drink 21 straight shots. Uh, Prilis123, let's get into that. Housemates of Shania Brown, St. Catherine woman who died after drinking a quart, a quart of vodka. Taking 21 gulps to mark her 21st birthday, woke up last Friday morning, tossed flour on her as she laid in bed. It was their way of saying, happy birthday, Shania. When Shania did not move after them flour, they splashed water on her. But yet again, there was no reaction. Them said, hold well on, wait there. The young woman had died in her sleep. Having returned home, from an event held in Old Works, Watermount, St. Catherine, about midnight. We got up about 9 a.m. saying that we we're going to flower her because it's a tradition in our house, you know. So I went to the flower to get the flower in the kitchen. We sprinkled the flower on her from her head straight down to her ankles. But we realized that she wasn't moving or anything, so we started to shake her. I went as far as to get a bottle of water to wet her with. But it's still there. Uh, but still, there was no response. This is one of Shanoya's housemates saying this. Still unresponsive, they decided to turn the usually full of life Shanoya, who was laying face down 
turn her over on her back to see if she was breathing. Hmm. They were in for a shocker. There was a lot of mucus and a lot of vomit on her face. I put my hand under her nose and she wasn't breathing. We called her mother and we told her that Shanoya is not responding. Then we call 119. Them call mommy first, throw out in. Then them call uh, 119. The conversation with the 119 dispatcher confirmed that there was fear. A mirror that they were told to hold in front of Shanoya's mouth and nose did not smear. She was not breathing. Some eight hours earlier, Sanoya was doing the unthinkable. She was downing 21 gulps of raw vodka ahead of her 21st birthday, which was the next day. She finally turn up. The housemates with whom the star, which I'm reading this from, shout out to the star. The housemates with whom the star spoke said that she was awake when her cousin and the now deceased woman returned home. They were among four people who live in the three-bedroom dwelling. Shanoya, the only non-blood relative in the house, joined them in March after they became friends. They came in around midnight in our car. My cousin knocked on the door and said she needed to help. To she needed some help to take her out of the vehicle because she was drunk. There were two males in the vehicle, and one of the men helped to carry her out of the vehicle, inside the house. We put her on the bed, two men in the vehicle, and you that drunk. All right. We, we are talk about this. We put her on the bed, and we saw that she was vomiting, so we set her in a position that she wouldn't vomit, and then when she finished, we set she could vomit. And then when she finished, we sat her on the bed so that she could sleep. The last thing she expected was that Shanoya, who moved to Maka, to Maka tree six months ago would not wake up. She just moved on six months ago. According to the housemate, while Shanoya was always the life of the party, she has never seen her drunk. Except, you know, normal tipsy, where she would have a hangover the next day. She is not an irresponsible person. In fact, she's the opposite. Although she may be stubborn at times, she's the sweetest and kindest person you could have ever met. She was just happy to be celebrating her birthday and she wanted to take 21 shots to mark her age 21. All right. Now I said this to you. Pass it on to whoever wants to hear it. Right? So I was in the army and it was customary to drink heavy. One tequila, to walk with me, walk with me. One tequila, two tequila, three tequila, floor. Not four, floor. One tequila, two tequila, three tequila, floor. Floor, four shots, floor. All right. Me don't know if she never know them rule here. I don't know why you would want to take 21 shots. Four shots is enough to hurt you. Liquor does not process through your body like that. If you're taking them shots quick, your system is not registering it until later on. See? It's going to be each, each one that you take, each 5.0% of alcohol takes one hour to be like out your system, so to speak, come back to something normal. And even then, you're still tipsy. So if you continue adding, adding, and she was adding raw alcohol. This wasn't no a beer. I may have talked about beer level, you know. So she had raw alcohol. Exactly tells. She poisoned herself. She poisoned herself. One tequila, two tequila, three tequila, floor. I remember when I landed in the UK, I was 18 years old. And I was free from everybody and wanted to live to see the world. I'm going to go out and party. And the drinks them was free. Because I don't know how to do in the UK within a house party them, right? Everybody bring a bottle, that kind of stuff. I'm in there, I see people are light, 
Drambuian, flames pan them drinks and knocking shots back. I mean, I have nobody to tell me when to come home, nothing. So I'm in there now. I'm start shot, shot, shot. I remember the bathroom in this house was upstairs. Why me go upstairs, fight this step, them go upstairs, figure use the bathroom and come back out with my pants down to my ankle in the middle of the people them party. My pants and my drawers down on my ankle. My hood out. Me turn up at the top of the stairs. Everybody downstairs is partying. Me see one big laughing scene. Pull up my pants with my brief. Fall down the people them steps. End up down at the bottom of my step. Shameful situation. These kind of things. I've been there with the drinking thing. Right? Listen. I don't know if she should have known. But common sense should I tell her, sir. 21 shots is a no-go. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. You know what I'm saying? I've been drunk to wear my throat before. I can tell you something about females. You know what they say? A two-man bring her home. I can tell you something about females when they get this drunk. When females get this drunk, I'll battery run, my friend. Four, five, six, seven man did they everybody take them turn. Whether you're giving head or them flip you over and you give backers and they, you, everybody take them turn. You just wake up in the morning, oh, I feel so sore and I'm hurting and me have like a headache and this and that. About four, five, six, seven man have a story about you over there. So, you hear? So, shout out to the females. Who keep on going out and getting drunk to the point where they can't remember nothing or control anything around them, you probably get battery before. Yeah, you probably a battery we call it. They call it a train. You probably get battery before and you don't even know it. Yeah. Oh, soldier 819. <laughs> the walk of shame. That's a barracks thing. That's when time uh, soldiers take Females back to the barracks. When you see us leaning out the friggin' cab at the back gate and checking in through security, and then Kara going to the barracks, uh huh. And she going to go get pissy drunk, and she just happy to be there amongst brave men in uniform and everybody in the fit and ready, even when them drunk. And she about to get that ass laced, and then she's gonna walk out in the morning, and we call it the walk of shame. Or she could just be with a one soldier. But I've seen in the barracks where females go from room to room, get pass, pass, pass. Man literally, I carry her go in the next room, I carry her go in the next room. And she's conscious enough to say, I want to go, bring me. Oh, you're so handsome. <laughs> He's cute. I want him too. <laughs> and then next morning, them don't remember nothing. Or they act like they don't remember nothing. I don't know. Lick her your courage. To make you indulge in things you wouldn't normally indulge in. And I guess it take away your feelings. Because them I get hammer and don't even know. Yeah. So be careful out there. Like I said before. If you're one of them females that get pissy drunk in public. You'll probably get butcher before and don't know it. Then Women don't know. They don't know. You have turn them all kind of way and them don't know. Ask me how me know. Ask me how me know. No, SoFlo is not going to confess to raping anybody. But I'm a man in relationship. See? And this is like a comfortable thing if you're with your woman and she drink a lot. Like if you decide, say, yo, babe, let's finish this bottle together and have some fun, right? You're, see, you're a man. You probably can't take in a little more alcohol than she. So you can observe your woman and your wife here and see, right? I mean, I'm going to say, oh, I don't want none because you drunk. I mean, I'll take some anyway. Uh, we 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 there together. We live in the same house to share the same bed. We everything together. So, I when me a position, she no no response. See, so I feel bad for that girl, especially the fact that two men drop her off, and then they needed help to bring her in the house. <laughs> yes, soldier eight one nine. Enough of them still won't listen, and they'll still go through it. They'll still go through it. I'm gonna get battery. And then wake up in the morning, act like them no member. Some of them don't remember it because if you're really, really drunk, you remember bits and pieces, but you don't remember proper details like right along in sequence, what happened next and what happened next. That's why if you ever hear a rape victim tell their story, 
their story would be in bits and pieces. I don't know what happened. I passed out. I woke up and he was on top of me. I passed out again. I woke up and somebody else was on top of me. Or I woke up and, you know, they tell pieces. That's how drunk goes. I don't say I forget everything and completely don't know what happened. You will have moments of up and oh shit and can't do nothing about it. Back to sleep kind of thing. So y'all be careful out there. I feel sorry for that young lady because turning 21, be a bee. That's a baby. She ain't start living life yet. Remember, the human brain, according to science, is not fully developed at the frontal lobe that handles procedural, higher level thinking, decision making. That's why they're so spontaneous and so them just ready for... Like, at that age, you just jump and do some dumb stuff and then you think about it later. Like, damn, I'm in trouble. I should have thought about this first. After you reach past 25, 26, 27, I would, I would even go as far as to say about 30 is when that frontal piece that fully developed to where you actually think consequences, then action. Before that, it's action. Oh, damn, consequences. So you have to remember that too. She was a baby, you know. We can't miss her rest in peace, but I saw it go. R.I.P. We live and we learn. Hope somebody learned from her because it's too late for her to learn. She just, you know, sad, sad. It happened in real life. Young girls, be careful, says Nicola Coleman. And then Henry says, why man love go where others have gone like back to back? That's disgusting. Why? And then, me no know, no. But half of the time, them too, they be drunk as hell too. And they be on drugs too. And they don't care either. That is why there is a AIDS epidemic in Jamaica that we need to know about and we need to be mindful of. People are going like AIDS not still the boat and it's ravishing our community. You understand? It's ravaging our community. Women them not care if the man them all have man. You hear me I say? Some man I go from battery right in a fear or something. And a whole heap of something are going out there, big RG, everybody around everybody. And kind of something, of course. And everybody drunk and high. And these molly parties where they pop pills and everybody get wild and do all kind of sin thing. Yeah. And then you find out that you're HIV positive because ain't nobody trying to put no condoms on. And ain't nobody trying to stroke good enough for where they can't actually feel if it busts. I say, oh, pull out real quick. Yo, that bust me. I go wash off real quick and take with it and try put on one next one or something or let's just stop. Nope. Then how about we just don't think about that? We're not going to use none. Yeah. Then I drive and pull over in a cane piece and banana feel and pan the back. One missy two girl, I'm two Jamaican girl, I tell a story about one driver, one taxi driver with them me. And they were like, oh, we just did it with him just for the fun of it. Because we were drunk and tipsy anyways. And then blah, blah, blah. And if him take out my friend out of the car and put her up on the trunk of the car on one place and one part. And he start to deal with her. And then me just dying in and all kind of same thing. That's the kind of life they're living. Right? In 2022, people still big and careless just like that. So when all the things reach you that comes with that type of lifestyle... Me not shed no tears. Me not shedding not one tear. You choose that. You choose that. Gangsta choose gunshot and prison. He chose that. You out there whoring and touring, you choose diseases and a frigged up life after. You choose that. Me not cry for nobody. I'm trying to warn who's try who don't know better. That's it. Because that's all we can do. One who don't know better and who want to listen, listen, and who don't want to listen, don't listen. AIDS is out there for you to catch. Syphilis is out there for you to catch. Um, them have some of the things them you can cure. Um, some things out there just can't be cured. If you want to walk around with a big sore on your hood and feel the rest of your life, then go right ahead and enjoy yourself. If you want to walk around with a vagina full of sore on the inside, then go ahead. And it broke out every couple of months. Go ahead and enjoy yourself. The pictures are there on Google for you to go look up if you want to know how it look. Go enjoy yourself. Catch the whole of them. <laughs> Leave none for me. Me not out there. Catch the whole of them. But yeah. Sad situation, man. Watch your kids. You know, because these are the ages where 
children are starting to feel that some kind of liberation coming on, you know, 16, 17, 18, 19, me a big man now, nobody can tell me not me, I go out and rave and party tonight, one life to live, hello, you only live once, y'all remember saying that, right, at 19 and 20, you only live once, and now you're way up in your 30s and 40s, 50s and 60s, and imagine all the dash what you did doing at your 18, 19, 20s, thinking you had one life to live and wasn't going to make it past 25. And you did. And a whole heap of people have story out there about you. Them know how you're in a your cuckoo who look. Them know. <laughs> listen, listen. Treat yourself good here. This starts with self-love right here. And if you're going to drink, let me give you an advice. If you're going to drink heavily, do it someplace like home. There, sir. Around people that you trust. There, sir. Nobody going to do it out in the public. All right. Last story for the morning now. Before slaying his pastor dad, a teen actually researched how to kill my parent. <sighs> Why? I tell you, I say, we, we're in those times. And again, it's from my place, Clarendon. The Clarendon police are investigating whether the murder of a popular Clarendon block... Okay, that's Leon. Um, the, the, the teen dad was killed in his link to double murder, blah, 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 before dad, the teen was... Son explored homicide options months before slaying his father. And that's weird. Why did they give me that headline and then this story? Glean up. Anyhow, there was a youth that actually researched how to kill his father. His father is a pastor. His father was apparently very strict, right? And he never liked how daddy had run the place. So two months before stabbing his father to death at their Petersfield district home in Westmoreland, that's where Shakira come from. Two months before stabbing his daddy, Garnet Foster Jr. researched ways to kill your parents. They actually have that online. Let me tell you, you know, anything you want, you ask the Google feed, them have something out there. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the truth or it's something good, but there's an answer to every question you have. That's why people who are living foul feel validated because there's always an answer to validate whatever the hell you're thinking. Imagine him there, I think, how for killing parents. And him go look up online and actually find how to kill your parents. You imagine that? Anyway, the now 18-year-old had become wayward and believed that his father, his parents, Garnet Foster Sr. and Camille Ebanks Foster, had been interfering in his life. You live in a mirrored house, so you mean interfering in your life, boy. Let me feed you every day. Let me clothe you. Let me have roof over your head. But me interfering in your life. He had reportedly joined a gang at Manning's High School in the parish of Westmoreland and had begun consuming dangerous drugs. Here, here, Glena, no, no. Dangerous drugs including marijuana and drinking. Marijuana is not a dangerous drug, but here's a lesson. There are different strains of marijuana that does different things. And you must know this. Most teens to young people, young adults, you know, them early 20s, when they're indulging in marijuana, they're not yet educated on the different strains and what each strain does. So, for instance, you get the wrong strain, it could send you into a psychosis. If you're already a depressive kind of person, personality, right? Take on things upon your head too much, sit and contemplate a lot and over contemplate on these things, over analyze, and you go take on some uh, indica, you're going to be in problems because indica is like a downer and it has you spaced out, right? And then there is the sativa, which has you up, like say you did hit a line of coke or you did lick a pipe or crack or something like that. So Different types of marijuana, different strains do different things. I don't think it's a dangerous drug. I think you need to be educated before you indulge in it. Anyhow, 
him apparently joined one gang at school and then now started consuming alcohol and ganja and he was displaying anti-social behavior patterns at home lock up in my room stay up on him device all day don't want to talk to nobody again that kind of stuff that behavior triggered strained relationships with his christian parent and especially his father who was a minister of religion the home circuit court heard on friday that sometime before the july 23rd murder foster senior searched his 17 year old son's phone and saw a bag of things upon the phone that was very displeasing to him i wonder where i'm fine you can imagine the 41 year old man reportedly flogged his son over the phone contents so you yeah, beat your 17 year old not a good look not a good look no 17 year old wants you to hold them and uh, beat them beat them uh, beat them so 17 you, you want to step away from 18 an adult and I understand I live in your house and you pay the bills and you feed and clothe me and all that but me don't want to take no beat up at 17 you understand and I tell new generation parents too the type of stuff that was done to us it's a new time Anyhow, teacher beat the picnic them at school like this, a gunshot when them reach out. Matter of fact, the picnic them now wait till they reach out again. Them I turn them pens around the next way and them pen and tab you up in there. And then their parents are coming to fight you after them picnic tab out your eye. So it's a different time we're living in. You can't just be beating these kids like that. See, but anyways, him daddy find him phone, going out and found things that were very displeasing to him. He probably go find porn. And all other kind of something in there. You're 17. Him discover, say, if I go on Google and type in a couple of things, I can get this porn for free. So, wow, look on this. You know, that's all. Oh, let me try that. All right. The 41-year-old reported the flogged his son over the phone's contents. Shortly after 5 a.m., on the aforementioned date, Foster Sr.'s younger son was jolted from his sleep when he heard people in the house shouting Tristan 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 that was the alias name for Foster Jr when he reportedly the younger son got to his father he saw his father standing there with a knife sticking out from the side of his neck Foster Jr planted the knife in a daddy neck side when he reportedly got to his father, he saw him with a knife sticking out from the right side of his neck. Foster Jr. was seen behind him and is said to have commented, Awa this. Awa happen. That's what the son said after I'm stabbing father in his neck. Awa this. Awa happen. According to his younger brother. When we go out there, I said, Daddy stand up with a knife in his neck. I miss my brother behind him. And my brother looked at me and said, What is this? What happened? The convict reportedly ran from the scene after him said, What is this? What happened? Him run. Ran to get assistance for his father at his uncle and his grandmother's house, which was nearby. He told his uncle that something had happened to his father, but that he did not know what had happened. Shortly after, Foster Sr. was seen staggering towards his family's residence. He indicated to them that he did not know who his attacker was. He was taken to the hospital where he died while he was undergoing surgery. Days later, Foster Jr. confessed to the murder during a question and answer session with the police. On Friday, he was sentenced to 15 years imprisonment and he will have to serve 10 years before he is eligible for parole. Mirated. You see how Jamaica jokey jokey, you kill your father. Right? And you get to serve 10 years and then you're out on parole. Why? Because he confessed. So confessing, his lawyer told him that in Jamaica's law, on the books, once you confess, your thing already slash in half. And then they will take it from there and you can get further discounted if you show enough remorse and all these other things. In handing down the sentence, Judge Courtney Dale said that there was no motive other than that Foster Jr.'s resistance to his parental authority. Bad picnic. 
Don't want to be parented, want to have him own way. It's your father, and it's painful for everybody. You, your mother, your grandmother, everybody, the school, everybody feels it. Your lawyer is correct. You have a conscience. You have something within you. You know you have done wrong, seriously wrong. And you know that you have some problems there. You have trouble with something. This is the judge talking to him, you know. I know I'm lying. I go up there and say, judge, I don't think we should throw away this one. I think he is very much able to be rehabilitated. Punish him, yes, but don't damage him by throwing him away for life for too long, right? He has a conscience. He admits to doing something wrong. He acknowledged that he did. As I got him lawyer, I go say, right? Which is what lawyers do. And the judge say, your lawyer is correct. You have a conscience. You have something within you, a heart. You know that you've done wrong, seriously wrong. And you know you have some problems there. You have trouble with something. She said, you were a child. You were just 17 and you have a good background. Your father was not a perfect man as they say, but an outstanding father and a husband, which is not something people can identify now in today's world. A man like that loses his life in that circumstance. It is very hard for everybody. At the same time, he said that Foster Jr.'s behavior based on the probation report showed that he was unpredictable and noted that was troubling for him to decide on a sentence. He said that it was all well and good that the young man's family maintained a level of faith in him in terms of his prospects for rehabilitation. However, his unpredictability made him a threat to his community. The judge concluded that Foster Jr.'s troubles stemmed from his drug abuse and the company that he kept, which resulted in his behavioral challenges. The judge said that time behind bars would assist him in settling this unpredictable behavior. It's your father. I believe he forgave you. Hear them, Rasa? The man dead. Me not think the man they have no... Here we go again, right? Speaking for the dead. After the dead is dead. It's your father. I believe he forgave you. Exactly, Christine Simpson. I think it's premeditated murder, my friend. Him sneak up behind the father and stab him in the neck and then talk about how I happen, how I go on, I run. But you know, they're going to say, well, he ran to get help. He was probably out of his mind for a minute. Your family forgives you, but it's a loss of a life in a circumstance where it doesn't have to be or didn't have to be. Handed down the sentence earlier in the litigation, Foster Jr.'s lawyer, Diane Myler, which is a woman, Barrett, had rehashed conversations with his mother and parental or paternal grandmother, Verona Foster, who said that they had expressed that they did not wish for him to be given a life sentence. They don't want that. Because daddy gone already and we don't want to lose him for life either. They, re <laughs> they reportedly said that he's a young man and he has shown that he was capable to reform, of reform and that they wanted him to get a second chance at life. The probation report mentioned how his mother has since been existing in turmoil. The woman was working overseas at the time of the homicide. She fly out, gone, go look money overseas. There's more sympathy here for the killer than, than there is for the killed. And I said that I wonder if it's because he's a man. Because if it hadn't been the other way around that he stabbed his mom, I bet you the, the, the feeling would have been different. Myla Barrett, in her appeal against a life sentence, said that Foster Jr. had swung the knife and did not know where it lodged until he looked and realized that it was in his father's neck. She asked the judge to consider that Foster Jr. did not get the assistance that he needed for his behavioral challenges, for his behavioral challenges, because his father had withdrawn him from Mannings out of embarrassment, although help was offered by the school. So you know, daddy, I preach, all right? Uh, minister, man of the cloth. 
And you know how we stay already. Try to keep all family business inside the house. So when your picnic start, they on drugs, act weird, become what we call a disgrace in the community. What we usually do, try to save face. So the father apparently withdrew him from Manning's because of the embarrassment of what his son was becoming. The, the lawyer is saying, had he not withdrawn him from school, they could have gotten help because there's counseling for this type of situation at the school that he withdrew him from. All along, them are blamed the poor father. All the man did they do is be a father. But I saw you go. Like Chris Rock said, women and children are loved unconditionally. Men, you have to be loved under all kinds of terms and conditions. And if you don't fulfill those terms and conditions, then love ends for you. Yeah, a true thing. Additionally, she argued that her client respected and loved his father. He had a great way of showing it, though. Had great regrets after stabbing him and was not devoid of conscience. And he was sorrowful. For his action. Temper your judgment with mercy. Your honor. They said. Ten years time. He'll be eligible for parole. And be out walking the road again. But in daddy dead. And come much pick me out. Then I have no father. Or them have one dirty daddy. Yeah. Wanty wanty can get it. And get it get it no wanty. That's how you go. Hit my thumbs up button one more time. Please do something for me while I'm alive. You know, I hear it when you're dead, when me dead. All right. Manners and respect to each and every one of you. Thank you for coming out. I appreciate you. Without you, there is no this. You are this platform. Especially them name there in that green. You are this platform. I appreciate you. Thank you. All right. And I'll catch you tomorrow morning right here on SoFlow TV. Morning thoughts. I'm out. Walk good, people. Walk good. Peace.